Crabs have been eaten along the East African coast for generations and we're along the coast of Kenya this week to learn how ordinary residents and business people are cracking carapaces to meet demand and sustain the species into the future. Delicious. Across Africa, traditional snacks are being swapped for Western fast food favorites, but in Abidjan, local food businesses are now fighting back in the battle for all taste buds. I'm in the Spice Island of Zanzibar. I'm here to find out how local businesses are steering spices industry from the plates to the face. Zanzibar once enjoyed a near monopoly in world markets for spices such as cloves and still reputedly yields the highest quality oil, flavor and aroma, but its production of the spice has slipped to less than 10% of the world market. Spices here are largely exported in their raw form, but now local businesses are taking a crack at adding value to the spices by creating natural beauty products. I'm on my way to meet someone who's making business out of beauty. This is Helen Dawson, founder of Nuya Essence. Nuya Essence line of products includes natural handmade soaps, body oils, body butter, shea butter and virgin coconut oil with raw material all derived from the Isles of Zanzibar. The beauty industry here in Africa is quite complex. Uh, we're seeing that there's a, been a big interest in recent years in natural products, but at the same time, artificial products are still much preferred. How are you combating this? Um, honestly speaking, when I started my business five years ago, um, I had so many women struggle moving from their usual skincare products to natural skincare products. And during that time, they had it was difficult to find these skincare products, let's say, in, in supermarkets or in their ordinary pharmacy runs. So I thought this it's a good time for me to bring this skincare, to bring these products that are natural, that can do so good on the skin. And at the same time, most of women who approach and buy my products, they have used the counterpart products that did not work for them, or they, they've used lightening products that uh, did so bad on their skin. So spices in Zanzibar are normally exported in raw form. How hard is it then to create a skincare factory and, you know, um, here locally? Um, I've come to realize that most of the raw materials that are made here are exported because they don't see a market, they don't see factories in Tanzania that can use the product that they're exporting. So for them it's lack of market and for a new person who is starting a factory in Zanzibar, I need those raw material. There was a time I was in need of lemongrass oil and it was difficult because this person told me that they have exported everything to Dubai and I was like I have a client list that need my lemongrass salt, that need the lemongrass scrub so what am I supposed to do? Most of the ingredients, the raw materials are expensive because we use very high-end, very fine oils that are very like well well made, well prepared and these oils are different, these oils are expensive at the same time they really do work well so we try our best to work with the farmers to call the contract with them so that we can buy a certain amount of products of raw material at a certain price so we try our best to negotiate with them to get the best price so at least the end product is not as expensive as you can see I'll take you through to the spice uh, place I buy my spices most of them, so the Arjani market is one of the famous uh, spice markets in Zanzibar. So you can see for yourself the prices that are there, the quality of the spices that are there, and then you can talk to the guys and we'll see what happens. So, okay, let's go. So this is the Darajani market. Right. I buy most of my spices and oils from here, so I get basically everything I need. 
So here is where I buy most of my raw materials. Oh, okay, great. Yes. Yeah. So they have a lot of spices and herbs that I can use mm -hmm. in my uh, skincare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, this is clove. Mm -hmm. Thirty thousand shillings for one kilo. So okay. this is that's one about kilo. maybe what fifteen dollars? Yeah, about fifteen dollars. Yeah. Okay. So you can imagine this is almost fifteen dollars. Mm -hmm. So. Even the raw material that we get is expensive. Mm -hmm. you know, so at, when we put them in our products, we have to really monitor the amounts that we're putting so mm -hmm. that it can have an effect mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. and also be affordable mm -hmm. to the end user. In the second part of the story, we look at how Zanzibar seaweed is making waves in the global beauty market. Bank of Tanzania Economic Review for December 2018 showed that Zanzibar export of clothes earnings fell to $30 million in November 2018 from $58 million in November 2017. The decrease was attributed to a drop in value and volume in the production of clothes, which is the main source of export earnings. Seaweed export earnings jumped by 76% from $2.4 million in the year ending November 2017 to $4 million by November 2018. The volume of seaweeds in that particular period increased from 7,800 tons to 10,200 tons. For five years now, Seaweed and Co. Zanzibar have been exploiting the global trend in natural cosmetics. Commercially viable seaweed was first introduced to Zanzibar's main island, Unguja, in the late 1980s from the Philippines. It immediately took to the shallow waters of the Indian Ocean Island. Zanzibar has historically been the third largest exporter of seaweed in the world, after the Philippines and Indonesia. For five years, Seaweed and Co. Zanzibar have been exploiting the global trend in natural cosmetics. Why is Zanzibar seaweed such a big deal in the cosmetics industry? Uh, because um, seaweed has a reputation for having a high level of antioxidants, mm -hmm. which helps prevent skin aging. Um, it also moisturizes the skin, it helps hair follicles, and it's high in minerals and vitamins. Mm -hmm. So it's a fantastic ingredient to add to food or skincare. So on a good month, how much seaweed are you processing into your goods and sending it to your customers? Uh, we use several hundreds of kilos of seaweed mm -hmm. uh, per month. Um, so on a daily scale, we'll be producing about between about 600 and 1,000 soaps per day. Mm -hmm. So what are the challenges in growing this business? For us, the challenges have been uh, education. Mm -hmm. That's one. So we've really had a lot of years of training and education. Um, and also um, understanding how sensitive skincare is. You know, there's no compromise in quality, there's no compromise in the method, the hygiene. And in that sense, it's a very sensitive product to make. What people have found is actually the difference between the synthetic product and the natural product. So it is true, it is more expensive, but that's almost unavoidable because the ingredients are so much more expensive. So what you'll find is that people, once they do start, they notice the difference and they stick to that. Yeah. And uh, also quality ingredients you tend to use in less amounts. The global skincare products market is projected to reach 177 billion US dollars by 2024. The levels of accessibility of both synthetic and organic products have also increased over the past few years, owing to the widening of distribution networks of manufacturers and suppliers. In Tanzania, there is widespread use of skincare products which contain mercury and hydroquinone. These products are however banned for import, but they still find their way into the country through smuggling. I am meeting Zanzibar women to find out what kind of products they prefer and why. But what makes a woman choose synthetic products over natural ones? I think many women, a big percent of them, do not have confidence in themselves. They think that if they use a lot of synthetic products, especially those that change the color of the skin, they may be more beautiful. And then there are those that use cosmetics to just adorn themselves and be smart. We think it is better to use products that are from outside the country than the ones found locally that are natural or even our parents were using. So is it a money issue? Because we can see that even natural products, for instance, those in this shop, seem to be geared towards high-income customers or tourists. 
The community itself is just scared because there are those that can afford to buy the expensive lotions from abroad. But that lotion costs $15 to $30 US dollars. But then come to the natural cosmetics store, there's a lotion that is only $2 or $10 but they will not come and buy it because they think that the natural product isn't as valuable to them as the product from outside. I would like the government to increase the taxes on import of synthetic products from abroad so that the natural products that you make can get a market, so that it's easier to buy them. So when they see how expensive synthetic products are, they are turned to buy natural. <laughs> From the beautiful islands of Zanzibar to the bustling city of Abidjan and the scenic Kenyan coastline, it's goodbye for now.